This is Reverse Reset Restore, the podcast challenging change through self-love and acceptance. My name is Sally and I'm doing the work of rediscovering who I was always meant to be. If you want your life to be different, just know it can be. Find out how change comes from within. Welcome to today's episode. It is day 14 of a 31 day self care routines, tips, techniques, our series, which is part of Mental Health Awareness Month here in Australia. Today, we are talking about sparking joy in your life by the act of cleaning and decluttering your space. The idea of sparking joy comes from Marie Kondo and her cleaning style, also known as the Hon Marie method, which gained significant popularity in recent years and for good reason. Her approach to tidying up and organizing is based on the idea of only keeping items that spark joy in your life. One of the major strengths of Marie Kondo's method is its focus on decluttering and letting go of items that no longer serve a purpose or bring you happiness. This letting go and decluttering can be a transformative process for many people as it encourages a more intentional and mindful approach to the things we surround ourselves with. My mum used to say a messy room is a sign of a messy mind. Decluttering is in the same vein of thought except that a decluttered room can help declutter your mind. The space that opens up in our homes can create a sense of space in our internal lives. Now you don't have to go for a complete minimalist look here. That's not what sparking joy is about. It's about mindfully releasing the items in your house that really don't bring you any joy. We watch Antiques Roadshow sometimes and it always amazes me how many people will hold on to something they absolutely hate because it's been in the family for generations. The object is usually collecting dust or packed away, doing what exactly? Taking up room due to obligation, being underappreciated or undervalued and stuck in an attic or drawer because it's hated by the individual who possesses it. Its purpose unfulfilled, sparking no joy for anyone. That's how we can live our lives. Hmm, another topic for another day, I think. Marie encourages people to look beyond the stuff you have and ask who is owning who. She says, the question of what you want to own is actually the question of how you want to live your life. If you've ever watched an episode of the show Hoarders, you'll glean a little bit of understanding that for hoarders, the emotional attachment to their things can be all-encompassing. What they want to own and their need to hoard becomes how they want to live their lives. Until they can work through the emotional and mental reasonings for their hoarding, they can't move forward. Marie's methodology is a little bit the same. She asks you to look at your belongings and gauge your emotional or mental attachments to them. Marie's emphasis on organizing belongings by category such as clothes, books and sentimental items instead of by room is also a valuable aspect of her approach. This helps to prevent items from being scattered throughout the house for a more streamlined and efficient organization system. While Marie Kondo's cleaning style has its merits, there are a few suggestions that could further enhance the effectiveness of her method for you. Firstly, make sure that you're adapting the approach to fit you. While it's important to adhere to the core principles of the KonMari method, it's also essential to adapt it to fit your own personal preferences. Everyone's living situation and personal circumstances are unique, so feel free to modify the method to suit your specific requirements. Number two, prioritize sustainability. As you go through the process of decluttering and organizing, it's crucial to consider the environmental impact. Instead of simply discarding unwanted items, explore ways to donate, recycle or repurpose them. This will help reduce waste and ensure a more sustainable approach to tidying up. Number three, consider functionality as well as joy. While Marie Kondo's spark joy criteria is helpful, it's also important to consider the functionality of the items you own. Sometimes certain items may not bring immediate joy, but are necessary for practical reasons. Finding a balance between joy and functionality will contribute to a more practical and efficient living space. And number four, maintain organization regularly. The KonMari method is most effective when it becomes a regular practice. Instead of just doing a one-time decluttering session, make it a habit to reassess your belongings periodically. 
This will prevent clutter from accumulating and help maintain an organized and joyful living environment in the long run. Ultimately, Marie Kondo's cleaning style offers a valuable perspective on tidying up and organizing. By incorporating some of these suggestions, you can further enhance the benefits and long-term sustainability of her method. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm tackling my bathroom cupboard today to spark joy and get rid of all those bits and pieces that inevitably end up tucked away in the bathroom cabinets. What about you? Have you been inspired to clean up an area in your home or office? Let me know over on the Reverse Reset Restore Insta page with the hashtag SparkJoy about what items are still sparking joy for you or what you were able to throw out, let go or give away. Want to spark some joy in my life right now? Please leave me a review or a thumbs up or five stars or share this episode so that with your support, this show can reach more people. I'll let the spark joy guru herself take us out to the end of this episode with another thought provoking quote. I personally think that this can be also applied to our thoughts, our feelings and our reactions as well as our belongings. When we really delve into the reasons for why we can't let something go, there are only two, an attachment to the past or a fear for the future. 